when I really got involved with hip hop, um, it was through my older cousin, my older cousin, Corey, who goes by Memo. He was in a production crew that were called the Mole Men. And like, they weren't nationally known, but they had like a pretty good, like local following. So he was like one of my older cousins that I kind of looked up to. And whenever I would go to his house, he would always have his headphones on and he had turntables. I remember a few times he was supposed to be actually be watching me. Like he was like my babysitter or whatever. And he always would just let me sit in the other room and he would have his hair. He never really would watch me. He would just turn the TV on, leave, go back to his room and just mess with his crates, mess with his records. I think one day I was over there, I really just was like, yo, what is it that he's doing? Cause he would do this for hours and I never really could hear the music cause it was in his headphones. And so I think one time I went to his house, I just really was just like, you gotta teach me whatever it is you're doing. You know, cause I thought he was cool. He dressed cool. He always had cool girlfriends. He always was like popular, had a good amount of friends. And uh, he always had people coming in and out of the house. I didn't realize at the time, but these were like MCs and people he was working with. So one of his best friends from like seventh grade was Ron Fest, who, you know, now is actually somebody who's pretty well known. But at the time I just knew him as Che and that's just like his one of his homies who would come through and rap. He also was really good, um, really good friends with Juice, who was like a freestyle rap king from Chicago that is pretty well known. And, Anyway, he had a circle, and so I, I really just, as a young person, admiring my older cousin, I, I wanted to emulate what he was doing. And so I remember telling him that he should let me get some beats so I could like write to them. So this is like my very first introduction to hip hop because he said, no, you can't, you can't rap until you study. And I remember he gave me like four tapes. One was Too Short, one was Public Enemy, one was Rakim, and the last one was common. And then he was like, you need to go home and like study these. And up until that point, I'm probably only had listened to maybe like MC Hammer or something like that. You know what I mean? I wasn't really into hip hop, hip hop, but he was like, this is what you need to do to actually become like a part of what we do. You need to listen to the people who come before you. And so looking back on it now, I'm glad he did that because I probably wouldn't have studied people from that era. Cause so after that point, I really became obsessed with like going to Dr. Wax, which was this place in Hyde Park. I used to beg my mom and dad to like buy me cassette tapes. From that point forward, I was secretly writing. Like I was writing things, but not sharing them with my friends. So fast forward, you know, when I entered uh, De La Salle, it was all boys school. We used to have this thing in the lunchroom called intramurals. So if you weren't playing intramurals, you kind of just had to sit and do nothing until lunch but we used to rap and so all my friends used to rap one day i just kind of got the nerve to like say something because i had raps i had like things written but like like very few like a few people knew like my cousins knew but like they don't go to school with me it's not like you know they weren't around and then a couple of my best friends were like yo like on the low, Jabari, he, he probably better than all y'all on the low. He just don't, he don't share what he writes. And they didn't really believe. So I think what they kind of gave me the venue to, to rap one day. It was actually pretty good. They told me it was pretty good. So then I had to actually come back. I probably only had like three raps that I really liked. So it was like, I probably said all three of them in one freestyle. <laughs> and so then it's like, oh, well tomorrow you gotta come back with some more. So I had to go home and start really writing. So from that point, I had to start really taking it more seriously. That moment when my cousin like, was like, oh, you need to go home and study. I was already pretty studious in a formal learning environment and all of that in class. I was pretty good. So I think that was probably the smartest thing he could have. That was probably the smartest way he could have phrased it was to say like, go study, go home and study. Cause that was like, a mode that I could understand what he was trying to tell me. Otherwise I probably would have kept bugging him. I think he wanted to give me like a bunch of different types of styles to try to figure out, you know, what I enjoyed or what would be most like me. I think he kind of had to know that Common would probably speak to me more than the others. I think he felt like I had to know that these other things existed and that they were authentic as well. But like Common was from like up the street. I ended up graduating from Luther South, which is the same school Common graduated from. So we had a lot in common. His parents were educators, my parents educators. His biological father actually 
was known in the neighborhood as like everybody's plumber. So like people knew who Common was just without like me ever hearing his music. I knew he was like famous in my neighborhood. So like hearing him actually talk about the things he was talking about in uh, Resurrection, I think that was the tape he gave me. It really gave me a sense of meaning. It was like symbolic for me. It was like, this is somebody from my neighborhood who has the juice, who's, you know, on a national stage talking about the streets that I walk every day, talking about the restaurants I go to after school every day, talking about high schools where I go pick up girls at. All of this stuff is like embodying, and I didn't know this at the time, like some of this stuff came to fruition like years, like timeline wise, years later it kind of came full circle. But he was like a mentor without being, I didn't know him for anything, but he, he was kind of like a lyrical mentor without me actually, like I live vicariously through his raps. Like I had role models, I had tons of role models in my life. You know, I wasn't lacking for um, positive male figures, but in terms of like one to be in the, in the culture and be a part of hip hop, that was my introduction to it. My, my cousin Corey was like my real live mentor but like, he didn't rap, he was a producer and a DJ. So he was like, look, you know, these are the people you need to study and learn from. You know, even some of his friends, I ended up studying how they performed. But I think even he was like, nah, if you really want to do this, you need to study like the people who are masters of it already. Not just, you know, we still trying to figure it out too. Like these are the people that have already mastered it. We're still trying to get to where they're at. Even if I was attempting to copy somebody's style, I was able to um, still appear authentic. If your life is similar to somebody, you, you learn how to kind of interpret things similarly. It, it kind of helped me to be able to integrate some of the things I was already going through. You want to get more formal, like socioeconomic background, like having parents that were um, middle class, uh, educated, impressing certain things upon you where it's like oh this is what we think you should be having the social pressures of maybe feeling like you have to go a more mainstream route you have to do well in school even go off to college common talked about going to famu and dropping out like he talked about different things that i hadn't even encountered yet so like i said it was like having an older brother that rapped that i listened to every single day it was like oh well i can see the pitfalls that he kind of dealt with vicariously through just listening through listening to his story. It made me be it made me feel prideful, you know, to be where I was from because it was like I could point to somebody. Like that's one thing that, you know, I noticed about like basketball players from Chicago. Like we could always point to somebody that's from our neighborhood who gives us inspiration. And I think Kanye does it to a certain extent now. And then even some of the people that I encountered as I was mentoring youth that are now like on like Vic Mensa or Chance the Rapper or Rocky Fresh or any of these younger guys. Uh, and they're doing it and paying it for it as well. But like, they would tell me like, when I listened to you, I was able to listen to somebody that rapped from a certain background that was familiar to me. And so that inspired me or made me feel like it was realer you know, that I could do it because there was somebody who literally was from my surroundings and wasn't fronting about being about being from the surroundings. Like he was actually, you know, being really, really frank about what his or her everyday life was. I think hip hop has a rites of passage aspect to it where like when you first get into it, you don't have no originality at first. You have to copy something. You don't, you don't come out the womb knowing how to walk. You know, you, even when you're crawling, you're kind of emulating the people that are walking around you. Some of that is innate and you know, might be hereditary in terms of like your ability to pick things up at a certain capacity. But then there's a, a certain level of just learning that has to happen for you to, to kind of nurture uh, not only that skill level, but just, you know, your want to do something.